Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Saturday, July 22nd, 2017 edition of VR News. Before we jump into the news, just want to give a quick shout out and a thank you. Talked about the branding changes before I left. Said I would talk about them more when I got back. Well, just a thank you and a shout out. And there was no pressure. There was no asking. I just think it warrants a public thank you. The multi-talented individual behind the branding, the same Alex behind Cybust. You can see the three holding up my HMDs there. He had a vision based on kind of how he saw my personality, on what he thought that branding should look like. And damn it, if he didn't nail it right away. Uh, just super happy with it. Based on the feedback, a lot of other people like it as well. So Alex, just a big, huge thank you. Much appreciated. And with that, guys, let's dive into VR news. I want to start with this first piece. And I've not been shy about the fact that I have been massively freaking disappointed with VR marketing efforts over the last year and a bit. Absolutely freaking abysmal. Wanting to see something big, but it seemingly never coming. Well, that may change. And it could be bigger than anything Sony, HTC, or Facebook could muster up marketing-wise. And it could come to us in the form of a movie. Let me explain. A Steven Spielberg movie. Being a kid in the 70s, a teen in the 80s, there were two filmmakers more than any others that I can think of that not only had a stranglehold on my imagination, but pop culture at large. Watch a George Lucas Star Wars movie and you were swinging imaginary lightsabers, firing lasers, piloting Millennium Falcons or X-Wings. Watch Raiders of the Lost Ark from Spielberg. And you and your buddies were spelunking in the forests, which doubled as jungles. And of course, who can forget E.T., which got so many of us interested in astronomy. Got me my first telescope and just this amazing obsession for space in general. Well, fast forward to now, to the present, and we have Ready Player One, a Spielberg movie, hopefully... He can wield a little bit more of that Spielberg magic to counter the apathy out there. We've talked about it till we're blue in the face that people just don't seem to get VR. They just don't seem to care until they try it. And hopefully, hopefully this movie is that catalyst for a lot of them. That's my hope anyways. And at the very least, hopefully it's a damn good movie. Next up, action MMORPG Age of Heroes finally launching. But based on what I'm reading and seeing, I know Nady did a video on this, Road to VR had a write-up. The consensus seems to be not ready for prime time. Now, it is early access, but a lot of people saying it feels very incomplete and very much like a demo. Contrast that to what I said about games like Raw Data, which despite being early access, feel polished and complete they're just lacking content but the engine the structure everything else is in place hopefully they can counter that and turn this into something others saying that the graphics kind of make it look like world of warcraft circa 2005 that kind of comment not as important to me because i think gameplay trumps graphics i still appreciate graphics i just don't think they're as important for example, this next news piece dealing with another MMORPG launching, Orbis VR. This one launches on the 28th of July, and you can see it looks really primitive. But what it seems to make, make up for is complexity of gameplay. So it doesn't have the graphics, but it seems to have fishing, alchemy, pets, rideable mounts, there's airships, multiple questing zones, all the foundations of a good MMORPG. Now, neither of these is probably going to be the one to wow people and be the destination MMORPG for VR, but hopefully they're small steps in the right direction. All right, and this next story, 
another virtual reality experience at San Diego's Comic Con, getting a lot of buzz, is this Teen Wolf VR experience. So when you come up to the kiosk, you're asked to put on the HMD. The experience loads up. You appear to be in a sewer type junction, a four way junction. You're quickly met by two characters from the MTV show Teen Wolf, and they beg you, they beg you to no matter what, not look. And damn, is it tempting. And if you're not wanting any spoilers on this, guys, you're about to go to Comic Con, stop now, check out the next story. But here I go. So they beg you, do not look. And you hear enticing and horrible sounding noises and flashing lights from your peripheral vision. Well, you can guess most people looked and the ending wasn't really good. <laughs> they got mulched and pretty much uh, eaten alive. The ones who managed to resist temptation and not look, well, they lived to see another day because the characters were then able to use their power to dispel the monsters. And the idea here is that the creators were able and are able to evaluate subtle movements of the viewer's head. So if they didn't look all the way, but only looked a little bit, well, that may have changed the dialogue to be even more desperate. And what I love about this, guys, think about this in terms of how powerful that could be paired with eye tracking, where you could be walking into a saloon. Let's just say it's a Western RPG style game. You're sitting at a table. If you mind your own business, look at your drink. Well, you could play that whole sequence out with nothing happening. Well, there happen to be a couple of ruffians. They're playing poker with a third person, clearly cheating. You glance over, that might change the dialogue a little bit, start creating some animosity. Continued looking, well, that just might cause them to stop playing and outright confront you, completely changing the game. And I think that aspect of VR, wow, that is so powerful, if you can get it right. And you could do that in terms of flirting with characters and changing dialogue subtly. There's all kinds of potential there. Really, really freaking cool. And this last story, We've talked about 3D audio and positional audio in relation to virtual reality, but I think it's time for just a quick revisit. So currently, most VR experiences, we know they're flat sound alongside usually pretty decent, if not amazing visual set pieces. The audio in general just hasn't seemed to keep up at all. Now, back when I owned one of these and one of these, the SID for the first one, it was called the SID chip, and the second had its own, uh, usually in the form of mod songs. They were way ahead of their time. The PCs at the time, well, they kind of sounded like this. Eventually, in the late 80s, they had ad-lib cards and sound blasters, but it wasn't until a card called the Gravis Ultrasound that PC started getting close to where the Amiga and some of the other computers were already at almost 10 years previous. Well, Xbox One X, they are supporting 3D audio. We've got manufacturers like Plantronics. They are developing 3D audio headsets. Another company called Calm Here Inc. They are working on sound projection that can deliver 3D audio without requiring you to have headphones. So for me, I think it's inevitable. The problem we had in the 90s is once sound Creative Labs had that monopoly, there wasn't really any innovation. There wasn't any competition. So the sound, yeah, it improved a little bit. But by the time the onboard sound, like from Realtek, for example, got better, there weren't compelling reasons without those advances in sound technology to get a standalone card like a Sound Blaster, Audigy, etc. 
hopefully with VR, that fast forwards a little bit and it becomes an important factor, an important variable in VR and mainstream again. Wow, really, dude? I freaking told you, to me, it feels like panhandling to these guys. And you're holding up a freaking cardboard, which is exactly the same. Seriously, dude. Sorry about that, guys. That is it for the news. Hopefully, you guys had an awesome game on Friday and a kick-ass weekend to boot. As always, guys, cheers.